background, man. So fun. Huh? I mean, it does feel right. <laughs> we do have sound. So much better. So much better. Okay, welcome, welcome, everybody. Episode 74, Axie Chat. Oh, man, enjoy. Good to see you, my friend. What? Do, do we have stuff to talk about tonight? No, I'm just... <laughs> kidding see oh my god i love it's wonderful i'm glad i i you know i i don't pick it up you you grab it that's wonderful Some, somebody's got to say it um doing doing good man i was i was i started to tell you right before this i'm uh, i'm a little out of breath i uh decided to let my dog out right before the show just try and get that whole you know barking fiasco out of the way sure sure and uh we live kind of on the edge of a nature reserve um so there's a lot of woods back there and uh he heard a deer and started sprinting off through the snow um and uh my my phone was dead um my i had no flashlight i just chased him into the snow and i get like i swear to god like half a mile out chasing this freaking dog um fortunately there's a full moon and uh finally catch up to just this black mass in front of me and uh Thank God it was my dog, but for a second, I thought it was, I thought it was like a bear or a wolf. Or, and you're like, you, you don't know, bears. you're just chasing some animal through the woods. Um, anyway, so I, I got him back, and uh, and we're here, and I'll, I'll catch up on my breath. Oh, that's enough. good. That's good. Uh, breathless enjoy. It's okay, man. It's it's all good. We, we'll take you any way we can get you. So, yeah, we are looking forward to Ziori joining us. Um, at some point here, um, but in the meantime, let's go ahead and, and, uh, hit the disclaimer and this content is for information on entertainment purposes only. You shouldn't construe any such information or material as legal tax investment, financial, or other advice. We have no responsibility for your decisions are not game devs and our opinion could be flawed. Axie hard. Axie hard. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome again to the public stream. Um, we do this every Tuesday, 8 PM Eastern and man, we have a good time doing it. I'm really looking forward to a great episode today. We're going to have a lot of stuff to cover. Um, and we yeah. got Ziori, we got Ziori joining us in just a few minutes. I think, uh, making some rice right now. So, um, we'll, yeah. we'll get the, the we, either the eating Ziori or the out of breath from eating before the show Ziori. Uh, looking forward to having him on. Um, you know, again, we, we, we did, I mean, we've had a lot more communication from the team over the last couple of weeks, wouldn't you say? Definitely. No question. I mean, this was one of our kind of biggest concerns last year, maybe not concerns, but qualms. Um, you know, it, it, it just felt like, you know, they're, they're building, we know that they're doing stuff. We know that we've got a lot of good stuff to look forward to, but um, there wasn't a whole lot of leakage. There wasn't a whole lot of like just kind of check-ins with uh, with the community, letting them know what's going on. And you know, this week we got some information about land. We got some information about you know what's being worked on. Um, Ziori is here to talk about some new uh, esports kind of initiatives. Oh, so yeah. excited about all that. It's uh, I mean, it's been a good week. Oh, speak of the speak Ziori. Of the Ziori. Watch this. Cool. Sorry. Ooh, Look smooth. at that. Spiffy, spiffy. Welcome, welcome. I mean, are you ready? How's it going, boys? Doing going great. Well. How are you? I'm fantastic. I just hopped off another podcast, uh, one I used to do in the Dota space, and uh, we haven't done one since August. So nice to catch up with an, an old Dota pal. Awesome. How is how is Dota going? Everything good in that space? Are people loving uh, it? Oh yeah, kind of. I mean, the game's good. The big major just got canceled because of COVID related uh. stuff. So uh, that that part sucks. Uh, but I think Dota as a game is still still chugging along. I'm not gonna lie, I have trouble keeping up with everything happening in the Axie space, <laughs> let alone trying to follow the Dota space. So I only catch like the really big headlines, like major event canceled. Outside of that, I got no idea, man. Yeah, no, I, I get it. It's it's tough. It's definitely tough to keep up in everything happening in Axie. Um, Enjo and I are just talking about how it feels like the communication from the team really has kind of shifted gears and um, improved. I think, it, you know, there's a new era coming with respect to how the team is communicating and the amount of information they're communicating. And it does feel like it's going to ramp up even more. To some extent, it almost feels like uh, they don't want to open the floodgates. Instead, they kind of want to let things kind of out um, as time goes on. I don't know. How do you feel about that? Does that sound rational? Or 
Yeah, I think overall it's gotten better. Um, I mean, when I joined, I definitely got the sense that um, like this is eight months ago that we were starting to outgrow this model where it's just Jeff and Alex kind of shooting from the hip as co-founders as they see fit. I think that's really charming at the start and it works really well. As Jeff has said to me, sometimes you have to do unscalable things in the short term to get to being scalable in the long term. And I think that's like a really good example of it because it's really authentic. It's very real. It lets you react in real time. But as they become more busy dealing with investors and at the time like signing those investment rounds and just starting to handle this crazy growth and having to make high level decisions that takes away bandwidth from being able to do like day to day communications and writing something like the dev update is you know it's not the hardest job in the world but it is a little tedious and it is time consuming you got to plan it out and you got to get the tone right and you got to decide what we can leak and what we can't leak and you know work with the art team to try to get some leaks that aren't too much and all these little things start to add up to make that a pretty big task so yeah. Um, it definitely felt like there was a gap there, and we're definitely hiring more people. I think uh, you know syntax was mentioned in one of the more recent updates about the community uh, policy, uh, the code of conduct. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, right. um, so like that's that's one of many people that we've brought on board. You know, since I've come on board to help us with this kind of stuff and streamline communications, and you know, we do work with like a, a communications team, like some consultants that help us deal with media inquiries and press and just strategize around all this stuff because it's it's important everybody's on the same page. So oh, yeah. it, it's challenging, and I think that's like something that people have observed some growing pains on with as we transition from like startup to AAA game studio. Heck we're we're yeah, still a work great. in progress, baby. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, I mean, it's great. It, um, it, it is it is tough to be patient, but patience is very, very important, especially in this space. Um, we are dealing with very, very new things here. And, you know, I know that sometimes it gets to be a meme, the, the cutting edge or bleeding edge or all those sorts of things. But uh, re really, um, it is re very, very innovative new stuff that's happening. And oh, we've got so many things to talk about. I'm going to I'm going to keep the conversation going. Again, hey, what's new in 2022? Um, lots of stuff, I, I believe. It's it's interesting. We had a tweet from Jiho or Axumane. I can't remember which it was off the top of my head. Or maybe it was even Ronan um, talking about, you know, be prepared for, for this, this week. I think it was Jeff saying, uh, rest up. This is going to be an interesting week. Well, I, I'm Sounds really like interested to see, to see how things uh, pan out. We, we knew that there probably wouldn't be anything big before Axie chat. That you know, that's asking for, for too much. So it, it always, always waits until after Axie chat is done. So hopefully, you know, I don't know. And uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll pester you for any leaks or any information we can get from you. Um, but it does feel like, well, I'll, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I get, I get too anxious to talk about things. Um, <clears throat> so development update. <laughs> uh, development update. Just amazing things. A uh, hundred member team now. Great progress on origin and land. And then, well, hey, there it is. When Ron. Um, that that was kind of where I was headed. Um, I loved the Happy New Year. I loved um, some of the art leaks in this uh, developers update. So yeah. excited and interested about Ron. It feels like, um, you know, we were talking about Ronan all the time in the past. We were talking about when are we going to migrate axes? You know, when when are we going to get a DEX for Ron? And, and, and now we're talking about when is the actual um, Ron token going to come? And it feels like things are pretty soon. I know we're getting close to the end of the farming period that was set up for um, both the yeah. Axis and SLP pools. So it feels, feels like, like a bit of a deadline. Yeah, yeah for feel, sure. <laughs> feels like um, I, I, yeah, I think this is one where there isn't like some big secret here, but it's also not my place to give you know too much detail around this. But I, I think uh, this is a good example that maybe adds some context to what Jeff tweeted uh, and that was very unpopular however many months ago about how we don't really give deadlines. I think it was something like deadlines are for boomers. Um, Oof. You know, this kind of like, or launch dates, maybe in the deadlines aren't the right word. Is, is it launch dates? Some some specific kind of date there. Um, I, I'm misquoting now. Now I'm embarrassed. No, no, it's uh, 
but like it's really hard to predict this stuff you know like we we're launching the token for our entire network and that's like you have a plan and then as you start to execute the plan other things pop up and then you need some rounds of approval and approval is a tricky thing to predict if everybody agrees and it can be really fast if every link of the chain has some little change or different tweak that they want before you know they'll stamp their seal of approval then it delays the whole the whole operation so um, there's a lot of moving parts when it comes to ron because it has implications uh, beyond just axie you know axie Absolutely. is the the only thing that we have there in terms of gameplay, but um, the RON network has really wide implications. So we, we just have to get this kind of stuff right. And um, someone used the analogy the other day uh, that I kind of liked, like it feels like a SpaceX launch a little bit, you know, like it's, ah. it's ready when it's ready. We, I don't know exactly when and I'm sorry, but that's just kind of the, the nature of it. So I agree though, I, I'm, you know, I'm curious. I've, I've seen a lot of wild price predictions for RON. And I've also learned that the Axie community has a lot of diamond hands that are very uh, long-term focused. So it does make me wonder a little bit, um, especially with like exchange listings. And the only way to get Ron is to to farm it. So like that locks up a whole bunch. And I, I'm just, I really don't know. I, I think it's very in, an interesting thing to kind of theory craft on. You know, what, what, uh, what is the price target for Ron? Yeah. Yeah, and I think we we did find out some news this week. I, I, I'm not sure if it was a psych out tweet or maybe a, an interview with one of the team members, but um, somebody did mention something about single sided staking. Uh, so we've kind of got some theories that potentially we'll be able to stake our our run kind of like how Axe is currently being staked. Um, so that's new this week. Um, and and I also did hear that you know potentially somebody left the front door open on some edited documents, and some people were able to get a sneak peek um on on some you know white paper sort of material so um before before i was able to get my head in there it was locked back down um so i'm not sure if that's uh entirely accurate but it does seem like you know it, it seems like we're getting close especially with that deadline you had mentioned you know uh ron should be released end of the month ish um maybe it would make sense to have a white paper before or, or uh, you know okay now hold on enjoy just a oh, second no so i'm, I'm just going to say this like so if something's happening this week and if it's not ron what on earth could it possibly be i mean because we already got information we're gonna, we're going to talk about this we're going to talk about season 20 um coming up we, we're going to talk about kind of the balance changes and so forth but y you'll blow my mind if there's something that i'm not seeing that could possibly be coming out um, pretty soon. I know that we've been talk we've been hearing about an experimental um, um, SLP something yep. or other. So maybe it's that. Um, I don't know. I guess Ziori. I, I think that that is something else that's in the pipeline that you should keep an eye out for. Um, and there's also no shortage of things that we need to build like with DAO in mind kind of counsels for. So like and competitive integrity is like a key one that we're gonna need for esports. You know, this taxed in situation that arose over the holidays with wind trading. This is the first of many things that are going to arise in terms of unethical or anti competitive behavior. And even if somebody gets caught uh, deciding on what the appropriate punishment is, is something that we need to get away from being, you know, like a single point of failure, like centralized Sky Mavis decision and a more decentralized centralized like kind of council that has representatives with some sort of different backgrounds or you know uh whatever and starting to build out you know that's sort of like a layer of the governance structure um like well, in terms that. of service sorry i mean sorry to you know? jump in but yeah governance no, is, is a huge part of all of this right and so some of those themes things seem like could be very very well um suited for kind of starting some of the government governance types of um interactions with access and, and people who have and like a creator program you know like a referral yeah. code that that's stuff that we've sort of talked about uh before it's been very highly requested all those things are being worked on you know like scholarships and guilds you know when are those automated tools going to come out is that locked in origin are those going to come out before origin um i don't know but i think all of those things are, are stuff that's in the pipeline that could kind of be dropped at any moment whenever they're they're deemed ready so Ooh. Um, Ooh, that, no, you know, no shortage of stuff in yeah. the pipeline you i mean know? I'm, I'm still waiting to see maybe some uh, staking dashboard changes. Those were discussed from the very initial document, you know, that this was just kind of the initial dashboard that, that was going to get more complicated and, um, you know, have more features, I guess I should say. Yeah. yeah. Enjoy. I mean, your... it makes, 
Yeah. yeah, well, I, I think I've changed my thought pattern a few times uh, <laughs> since you started talking. Um, but the one thing that keeps jumping back out to me is, you know, one of our, our big limitations for adding new users right now is uh, is Ronin, right? And and until we have that um, that RON, you know, payment structure in place, uh, we're, we're kind of limited a little bit. So, you know, once that happens, it's, it's possible the floodgates open to some of this new functionality that allows Axie to be more accessible, that allows other games or other products to be released onto Ronin, which, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping will happen. I, you know, I think that's probably one of the, one of the big points of it long term is to, you know, and the team's kind of mentioned some different financial um, uh, instruments that might be able to be added in the future um, or different contracts and stuff like that. So that's super exciting. Um, but we're kind of at a standstill until Ron releases. So, um, yeah, I mean, we're we're you know maybe two weeks out until we maybe get some more answers there. Yeah, we, awesome. we move uh, a little bit slowly. Uh, it's just a little bit how it goes. Uh, it it always comes back to we're doing stuff for the first time, and it, it's hard to estimate. And even with our own internal estimates, often things take longer than we think they will, and that's what scares us to like give hard dates for stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't want to get into it too much. I've been involved in the business world for a long, long time. And it, that's just kind of the way it goes. You need to be intentional and move forward at the pace that you can. But if you push forward too fast, you can end up setting kind of landmines for yourself. So it is important to, to be wise about how you handle your progression. Um, one of the things that was talked about was land. Um, and Zuri, I know you like land and you have some. Um, so I know you're interested in this. This isn't maybe necessarily your primary focus yet. I'm looking forward to an eSports land um, uh, interaction mm -hmm. at some point. That would be amazing. But uh, was very, very excited to see the art in this. Um, I guess. Are you guys stoked on 3D? Like I, I saw some, I, I'm sure some of these are haters, but I did see some people say like, oh, the 2D is better. Or, I always pictured it 2D, 3D sucks. It looks cheesy. Uh, any thoughts on that? Are you guys bullish on the, the change to 3D? Do you think it's worth, worth the effort to make it look that, that style? I was going to let Bernard go I'll first. Go, I'll go. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm happy, happy to. I feel like, you know, when uh, when Z and I get on a on a chat together and Joy, we just kind of go and go, though. I guess, so I got to be mindful. It's all right. I'll tell you how wrong you are in a minute. Go okay. ahead. All right. So um, my thoughts are this. I like the 3D. I, I like Clash of Clans. I like um, the 3D modeling um, system. Most, most games are going that direction. I can understand just how um, I, there's two things. One... Uh, Masamune's art is amazing, and I loved Project K in terms of that art style. And so it's a little bit sad to me that I guess it sounds like Project K in that form um, is is a, is never we're never going to see that in terms of an actual play. So that's a disappointing factor to me. Um, the second issue, I guess, that I would wonder, I just wonder about is you know if we were close to having a 2D land game and then just pivoted, that's a little bit hard too, um, just because, I don't know, I don't think anybody expects the first iteration of land to just be perfect and, and not uh, potentially need to have upgrades and release and so forth. So I don't know. The pressure it, does change a little though when yeah, you start yeah. adding zeros to the player base. And I think that's yeah. uh, always an important part to factor no, in. I, I completely agree with that. I just, I still don't know if we know enough to evaluate exactly how land interaction is is going to take place and so uh, for me i've always kind of envisioned initially that it would be primary land primarily landowners with some ability to upgrade into the future to allow other people to experience land as well um, and so you know if if this is if this idea is out of the gates going to be anybody can um, i assume anybody with axes can engage with land, then it's probably a really, really good move. That just invites other questions that everybody's going to wonder about with respect to land and um, value return and, and all of those sorts of things. Um, how am I wrong, Enjoy? <laughs> no, I, I, I was proven wrong. I think that was a, a pretty solid take. Um, I, I think that most of us who played the 2D version um, really liked what we experienced. I think the art was on point. Um, it felt grand, meaning like your axes were kind of small, but everything was really big around you. Um, and this art, like, I, I think it's good, but I think it doesn't feel as grand, although I don't really have anything to compare it to in terms of size. 
Um, but there was there was something about that old 2D isometric style that kind of um, just made it feel large. Um, the, the thing I do like about this is I think that it allows for a lot more expansion. I feel like the world can be a lot more um, expansive um, mm-hmm. in, in, a th- in, a, in a 3D world. Um, but, you know, again, we're, we're not, we don't have a lot to go off of, right? We're looking at a couple items and a, a, a kind of a... True. Really a, a, a cinematic trailer. Um, so not sure how, how close to reality that trailer is, but the trailer looked like things were, were huge and, you know, you could explore and get lost and I, that's super exciting to me. Yeah. I, awesome. I love that. Uh, I, I always have like this MMORPG vision for my axes. Now I've played a lot of world of Warcraft, uh, in my day. So I love the idea of like axie raids, you know, 40 oh. axes coming together to kill oh. one big boss or like axie needing exploring. a mystic or an origin or something well, to lead the battle or without having that you, you might not I'm have spacing a on the name of it now, but there's a game that somebody showed me recently. It's like a mobile game and it's like a, a culture game where there's no competition. You basically just fly around in the cloud and like collect energy with your friends and the whole thing is about just like collecting stuff with Mm. your friends and you can like give your friend a flower and then you can like dm each other and all this kind of stuff and i love the idea of that energy in an axie game like just me and my mates just wandering around and trying to like explore lunasia and see stuff we've never seen before like breath of the wild kind of you Mm. know let's let's just go explore the jungle i love that energy Mm. I, i hope we can get some of that in land that's uh yeah, That's the stuff that gets me really excited, at least. Totally Again, agree. I'm not on the game design team. I'm just yeah. uh, dreaming as a gamer right not now. Right. And, <laughs> and, and I approached it that way, well, too. I, I hope everybody realizes that. Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to hear your take as as a landowner, as somebody who um, is interested yeah. in this in this feature of the game, uh, the universe, because uh, it's multiple games. Yeah, I, one thing in this, though, that kind of was a, a striking thing to me Um you know, just to give an idea of how much effort goes into a major feature, the trading system will likely take more than a month to build. And I mean, that was a little bit of a surprising sentence to me because I kind of figured at this point, we probably already had a trade, trading system mostly built and, and prepared. So, you know, um, I, again, it, I like hearing, I like hearing things from the team. I like hearing information that kind of lets us gauge where things are, but um, you know, that, that's a, that's a, <laughs> I guess that's one of those double-edged, um, things to hear, um, that if, if the trading system is still being worked on, uh, we're, we're probably pretty far out. From yeah. But what if it's like the coolest trading system you've no, ever dude, seen, Baron Art? What totally. if it redefines your expectations of a trading system? I don't know. I now it. I'm overhyping it. No, I, I, <laughs> that's yeah. all I got, buddy. That's I don't know right. if I can I get that excited for a trading system. I can. The ecosystem is the We've got Katana, and Katana's pretty awesome. You yeah. know, I, I, I think you just skin that in a certain way that al- allows you to train, trade these items or these assets. And, you know, I think most of us would be happy. Yeah. The, the hard thing with a lot of this yeah. is, you know, most of, <laughs> the, most of us just want to play. We just want to utilize our, you know, the space that we've been dreaming about for a long time. And, you know, seeing it get pushed yeah. out for, for another vision is, is a little bit tough. Um, but I, you know, I, I agree I with good. the sentiment, right? Yeah. It, it is, it is. I agree with that sentiment yeah. that a lot has changed since it was an. an I hear you. No, or, you, you guys or, have a very fair gripe. All right, I, I'm new to this whole land thing. I've had my land for like what six months, seven months, something like that. So. Yeah, I'm itching to play it, but it's not that big of a deal. You guys have been like <laughs> dreaming and theory crafting, and you got teased with the alpha. Like th- this has been like a dream of yours. Like how long are you guys gonna have to be dreaming of this before you can just play it? Like how long until Baronar gets to finally use those wood chopping <laughs> items and cut down some trees? I-, I mean, these are serious questions. So I, I feel for you guys a hundred percent, and. Um, yeah, like I, that, that's part of this live experiment that we're living. Yep. You know, it's just uh, right. definitely uh, love the updates, love the um, disclosure of information. I'm excited about that and look forward to, you know, more and more of, of that over time so that we have, you know, a better sense of where we're headed and maybe some time frames. Maybe that's overly boomer of me, Jeff, but uh, time frames <laughs> are not a bad thing in, in my world for sure. Yeah. All righty. Um, so great stuff here as well. Um, more information, more uh, VFX, uh, 
disclosures of, of origin. Um, we're watching that for those of you that are listening. Um, yeah, just, just great stuff here. Um, I, I, I don't know if I could be more excited about Rage. origin. Um, the, yeah, the, the, ah, I mean, every time we talk about a balancing thing, every time we talk about current battles, I, it's kind of hard on me. I think I even mentioned this to you, Ziori, or maybe it was syntax or somebody else. I can't remember for sure, but I was just like, ah, oh, it's just a, it's a two-sided sword again. Like when we hear about battles, I just feel like we're further away from origin and, um, when we see balancing changes and so forth, it, it feels like, oh man, um, you know, that must mean we're, we're a ways off from, from origin still as well. But it is good to hear that it's been push, pushing full steam ahead, um, that uh, there's it's, a yeah. alpha test it's, coming in the It's important months. to make sure that we like, I, I think like try not to think of it that way because we're investing esports dollars in like the current version, like version two of battles. So there's like a certain amount of like integrity that has to come along with that and effort to make sure that game stays balanced until we can kind of push some of that esports energy into origin when it's out. So uh, the teams operate pretty independently, you know, like we need it's because remember, Jeff's I, in I chat, went, sorry. Oh. <laughs> he, he's, I'm playing Origin right now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, like, dude, I went through this with Dota, though, right? Like, Dota 1 and Dota 2 lived side by side for a while there. And it was this weird thing of, like, how long are we going to support Dota 1 now that we have Dota 2? Um, and there was a weird effort there of trying to maintain both games and pushing content in both games at the same time, even though the mechanics don't work the same way. So, um, yeah, th there's an important balance there for sure. And uh, yeah, it's full steam ahead and we're not forgetting about version two at the same time. We got you, Baronar. We're multitasking. We got dad hands here. I love it. I love it. And, you know, honestly, the team's getting larger and it feels like um, I like to see many, many experiences. There have been lots of discussions about um, whether it's possible to keep the current battles version and have origin, um, whether that's something that is within, within the cards. I mean, there are... A very dedicated group of people, especially tournament players, who absolutely like the current Battles uh, version. There are many, many people who just feel like it's not very fun. I'm just being honest about that. Um, and so looking very much forward to Origin to see um, how that gameplay is and how that goes. Um, you know, I, I, yeah, I like it. I like you, you bringing me back to planet earth but you know this art that i'm seeing here that is uh the battle upgrades apparently or the um power ups i think is what it says yeah the in progress power up art is incredible so amazing excited to see what it takes to get those some of them even look like they have um features that need to be maybe socketed unless that's just a paw that kind of looks like a socket. i love the lore too am i the mm. only nerd that like read the bubble lore and oh, was like that's why i, oh, I want to write some lore People for my mystic asking. <laughs> People have been asking for that lore for ages oh, ever. since this thing started, so it, that's awesome to see. I love it. Um, Zero, I, I got to ask. You know, your your kind of specialty is in the esports side of things. Were there any considerations, or have there been any considerations going into building out Battles V three, um, specifically for esports that you can key us into? Yeah, so like we need more infrastructure, right? We need more tools. So the current game of Axie has like the most basic set possible. You got a friend list, and when your friend's playing a game, you can spectate his live game. And then we've got replays. It's it's very uh, simplistic in the set of tools that we have. And I think expanding that is really important. Like having a lobby system like you would see in most other games so that you can you know, get your opponents in there, maybe get your spectators and your casters in there, and then it all starts at the same time like you would have in a traditional eSport. I think that's a really key part of the product offering. Um, I think there's a lot of real estate in the game client that can be utilized to advertise tournaments and events or even Twitch streams, uh, like the launcher, having having Twitch streams as a part of it, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. I think those are all things that we should be utilizing a little bit better and totally have plans to, uh, especially within Origin. Uh, and similarly, I think anything 
like the Dex, for example, where we're sending people off our platform to use something that they need to really benefit from the full utility of our platform. We just want to have it ourselves, right? Why send them to another exchange that we could have Katana for ourselves? So it seems similar for tournament brackets, right? Why send them to another website to do tournament brackets when you could do it just right through the game client and yeah. you could just do payments on Ronin just like, hey, this is how everybody placed, boom, and that makes it you know, easier for tournament organizers, and it also makes it safer for players because there's less human error, right? It's all smart contracts. Whoever places, however, yep. you know, tournament organizer confirms it or whatever, and uh, there you go. So all of these things we've been talking about, especially with some of our new hires, we've been talking a lot more about the user experience um, and creating the tools that make it easier for creators to create content. Um, right. Kind of a meta sentence there, but yeah, uh, I that think that stuff's that. really important. So. And yeah, all that. Yeah, that was something I was going to point out too. Um, you, you know, you mentioned something really interesting. Uh, the Axie community has always had a great set of uh, content creators and supporters, um, people going out and, and just making stuff. And, uh, you know, I noticed in, in that, um, that announcement that there was some mention of potentially some sort of content refer rewards, um, which would be, I think, I think huge to entice people to you know, make this more of a career or, you know, put more effort into their stuff. Um, and, and you just said, uh, potentially building some of that stuff out into the, uh, into the launcher as well. Um, letting you know what content creators are, are doing at that point in time, um, would be, would be awesome just to get more eyes on maybe new, new creators or, mm -hmm. um, yeah, all, all that sounds awesome. Yeah. All step by step, but uh, it's on the radar. And as we build out our team, I think we have more resources to prioritize this kind of stuff. Up until now, it's been allocating basically all of our resources and then some to like build out our, our minimum product offerings. And we're finally getting out of this like alpha stage and into like beta and like closer to full launch where we can actually start putting polish on this thing rather than it just being like a, you know, minimum kind of uh, MVP, I guess is what you could call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I did read an article where you were quoted as saying that you thought that Origin was probably Q2. Uh, uh oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All so, right. We, I'm not going to pressure it's, that. It's fine. It's, it's more just like I intended to say by Q2, sort of saying this sort of safe, like, hey, in the worst case scenario, sort of was oh, I was okay. sort of trying to bumble at. So I, I don't want to like, I don't even know if I misspoke or if I was misquoted or, or what, but it's like that little nuance of it's coming in Q2 or it's coming by Q2. You know, that one word makes kind of a big difference in the context. So mm -hmm. it wasn't meant to be like a hard date of trying to buy time. It was meant more of like a, a, a conservative estimate kind of thing. Um, so I, I, I screwed up. I shouldn't have said that. that no, no, was and a, it, it's a, all good. And I, I think up. that, you know, sometimes as a community, we make a mistake in thinking that every time a team member speaks, like it's all gospel, like um, it's something that we can all 100% count on. And, you know, this is for sure what it is, especially, you know, I, I know how it goes. You, you're talking, you're talking with people and, um, you know, you have as much hope and you're not over the release yourself, Ziori. And well, and it was overall a really good interview, right? Yeah, that, it was that whole interview, it was, it's a perfect example of like how careful we have to be in some of these media situations. That was a 45 minute conversation with someone who was in, like, that wasn't a hit yeah. piece, right? That was Sorry. really a great article about like our movement and what we're doing. And it's a shame that I just accidentally misspoke for one sentence in there sort of getting, you know, I guess you could say caught up in the conversation yeah. and not thinking about that being a direct quote where I should have been just more careful with my words. It's um, tough. I, so, I, I messed up. Sorry, guys. You know, that's, so, <laughs> that's all I can say. I, I got nothing else. So what you're, so what you're absolutely 100% confirming is that season 20 is going to go and, and wrap up and we're going to jump right into uh, version three right afterwards, right? God, I did an interview earlier today where somebody asked me, on a scale of one to 10, what do you think the chances of season 20 being the last season on this current version of Battles? It's a hard question, partially because the cadence of the seasons is changing, where we had like the longest off season ever to like right. a bad degree. And then this season with the, you know, the, uh, 
added time, it ended up being like the longest season ever. So if we keep up at that cadence, um, yeah, I don't even know if that's a bold statement to say <laughs> that this is the last season uh, coming up. Gotcha. So I, I, I don't, I, I think that makes sense. It does seem a little poetic to kind of end version two of battles on season 20 and then kind of mm. start fresh at a one rollover. Uh, but that's, you know, I, I think that the timings will probably line up nicely that it is more likely than not. This is the, yeah, season 20 will be the last one. Right. Um, right. But again, wow. don't, don't, don't quote me on that. Uh, <laughs> sure, that sure. That's, there's it, a lot of variables at play there. And I hope I didn't just screw up by saying no, that. I, I'm all nervous because I know look, right here, right, right here now. on the slide, um, it says target we're, we're alpha test billboards. Launch in the upcoming months so um, there you go yeah, we're yeah. in q1 right now so there you go upcoming months what yeah, <laughs> yeah and here's hoping i mean I, i'm really excited for that i i again having some sort of time frames or expectations to me is not a bad thing um and i and i think sometimes especially in the past in this space like this element of surprise has seemed to be pretty important and I, I sometimes I just wonder if that's really if that's really important at all. And you know, I it's not very often that uh, I, you brought up World of Warcraft. You know, Blizzard doesn't really uh, say, "Hey, oh, here's surprise. We've got an update that we've been you know a, a brand new um, experience that we've been working on for two years." And oh, here's the surprise. It's it's here this week. So um, I think it's just kind of. As you said, in the past, communication was a little bit different, and we're all growing up. We're all growing up together, and I'm sure these things will yeah. get sorted out. Uh, it's not a concern. Yeah. It's just... I think we're just trying to get a little bit better each day. I think I, we really embrace that. Like, if we can improve 1% every day, that compounds so much over time. Like, that's our target. So as long as we're, we're doing better than we were yesterday, I think we're, we're happy at, at the most basic level. You know, that's the first step. Yeah, yep, 100%. I'm just really excited about Origin. I'm excited about land. I'm excited for these things to come. And I am excited for them to be really, ex uh, you know, excellent experiences. So um, if, if it's going to take some time to get it to that space, then eh, it's going to take some time. All right. So, ah, here we go. Here, here's the big ticket item. Um, the new eSports announcement. So this is the second grant. 7,500 access over five months. Um, I'm going to kind of give the floor to you, but a few questions that I'm guessing is this anticip anticipated to be current battles the entire time? Or um, I guess I'll let you go. Yeah, a, a little open-ended on that one. I think any organizer that is going to pitch like later dates, like, hey, I want to do an event in May. I think that's a conversation that we'll have with them of like, hey, you know, understand some risks. And, you know, I think most of the concerns people have had right after this drop, um, once I had some one-on-one -on -one conversations and kind of reminded them that like, hey, we have a full-time esports manager that that isn't me, you know, this that, that guy, Stuart, um, you know, I'm, I'm developing the program. We have people to help us execute the program. We're here to work with you, not against you. Um, you know, we want to help you meet these other language commentators to start telling these stories and crossing the cultures. Um, you know, if version two comes out ahead of schedule, or sorry, version three comes out ahead of schedule, and you're torn between, do I do a version two? Do I do a version three event? I think we're open-minded. We're willing to have that conversation and figure out what the best, best path forward is, given their goals, given our goals, and, you know, the timelines we're talking about. So, um, you know, you have to definitely lay out fairly rigid, you know, requirements to try to filter the proposals. But I think once we start approving people, you know, we, we just want the best possible Axie events that, that can be made, both for the players and the organizers uh, and the commentators, right? We want all parties involved to benefit from this stuff. So, um, yeah, that's definitely the goal. We've got a, a great question in chat that kind of stems from, like, it, it's a person who doesn't have a company or a website or you know, any, anything to really base it around, but has some really great ideas for events. Um, are, are they eligible for the grant um, if they're able to put together some of the requirements? How would that work? The short answer, answer is yes. Um, I think in the first grant, it was really hard because we were still stuck with that access only server. So it was like this really tough decision of, of being so limited and even pushing it to 35 events was, all right, let's, let's make sure the server is going to be stable here. 
So in this case, we don't really have to worry about that. So like, you know, we're hoping to green light like 75 to 100 tournaments. And I would love to spend some AXS in these like smaller kind of micro amounts for people that have put together a pretty solid proposal. Um, it yeah. does get a little tricky because we also get raked over the coals for if we support an event with official Sky Mavis dollars or Axie Dow dollars, um, then uh, I should say AXS, I guess, uh, Axie AXS, um, that like, it doesn't live up to the quality or like, hey, I could have done a better event. And we do want to be mindful of quality at this particular point in time. So it's all it's all stepping stones, you know, like we need to try to jumpstart some of the commentator aspect of our space, I think, and give more stuff for our content creators to participate in with these yeah. tournaments and start building that intersection. Um, over time, we'll have like a ramp up towards this sort of Axie Pro League type model. You know, by over time, I mean like next year, uh, 2024, you know, the goal is to have this kind of built out uh, circuit that, that we can have. Um, once we have that kind of stuff, I think we'll need to figure out how do we support this this like contenders league, you know, the up and comers, and make sure it's not just money going to the top, but esports is more accessible for for everyone. So I think that's where the committees and the councils and the DAO start to come in and get really interesting. Like we have all this money in the play to earn fund, how do we allocate it? That's a question the community is going to have to help us answer over time. Yeah. So th there's a balance there. I think for this specific grant, we definitely want to Axie's in a delicate space, and we want to have a Events that we can really show off to the world. You know, we've been talking to to people at broadcasting platforms like Twitch about getting some of these events like on the front page and getting some additional promotion there. So I think we can leverage high quality events at this particular moment in time, and then maybe with future grants, we can focus on making sure that like really foundational layer of up and comers is getting access to money as well. So yeah. if you're confident, if you get a good idea and you can get a good proposal, I totally encourage you to submit it. But um, yeah, we're still not quite ready to get down to the, I want to run my first tournament level with this grant, I don't think. Okay. I, I do think though, um, you know, there, there's obviously a, a very strong community around Axie. Um, you know, if, if somebody's got a really good idea, feel free to reach out to me, feel free to reach out to Baronar, you know, toss it past us. Um, 100%. you know, we can either put you in touch with, with people to help you make it a successful tournament and, um, maybe give your, uh, your proposal a little bit more juice or, um, you know, whatever, uh, we're happy to help. However. Absolutely. And, you know, we, I've been looking through these things too, and I guess, just uh, just to be clear about the language portion of the requirement, um, I, I mean, I, I'm guessing you're you're you are saying that they need to have um, English, Spanish, Portuguese, and Tagalog all live. Is that correct? Yeah. So I think the the two sources of confusion at the beginning are one, this doesn't have to all be at like the same studio level quality. You know, if you're a, a, a let a LATAM organization and it's like a, you know, South American focused tournament that could be your primary like studio stream. And then the idea is to at least make an effort to find like a streamer in these other languages that um, would be interested in covering it. Because right now we haven't really released a lot of gameplay recently. So I think we have a lot of creators and streamers that feel hungry for content and things to cover. So I think if we can create a demand for organizers to kind of tap into some of that talent, uh, there's a great intersection there where um, it's sort of like free content in a way for these streamers or, or commentators or what have you. Uh, so like we've created, we have this esports discord. We've been adding people uh, like crazy over the last couple of days and tagging everybody according to like what language they speak, what their skill set is. And the idea is it'll be this meeting ground where tournament organizers can, you know, drop, hey, this is my event. These are the dates. I need a broadcaster of this language and they can get some proposals or at least be in touch with people uh, from that culture. Um, I think from an esports perspective, I really want to make sure that we all know Axie has a global community, but I don't want our community to just be made up of these individual tribes that don't really interact with each other or care about each other. I want Dota, or, uh, <laughs> Dota. I want Axie fans in the Philippines to know about the best players in South America and be interested in their storylines and vice versa and across all of these other cultures and areas that are going to start joining Axie and esports, right? As Africa starts to join Axie and have a presence in esports, like I want to capture some of those storylines and I want those stories to be told in multiple languages. I want people in Brazil to be able to empathize with players that they might not speak a native language with, but that story can be captured by a streamer. Um, that's kind of my vision for it. So 
Uh, the goal is not to make like a, this really overwhelming requirement, but more so try to at least start connecting these content creators with these tournament organizers that are creating content by running these tournaments to begin with. That's awesome. And I like the 1080p requirement. I don't, I don't even think we run in 1080p uh, for this, but we could. It's just we want to make sure that the stream is um, easy for people to access and we're, we're not like highly uh, graphically intensive here <laughs> as far as gameplay and stuff. Well, you're a podcast. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. I mean, you can definitely, 720 is totally fine, but um, it is like a quality control thing. Again, it's like this is community money that we're kind of spending on these events. So there should be this kind of minimum threshold. And it, most of them are pretty reasonable. And if there's some reason, again, we're here to work with you. So if somebody comes to me with a great idea, like, like one of the best events that we greenlit in this uh, first season was like a 35 AXS league for Venezuela that was really well produced. Uh, it went on for like two or three weeks. It was this great league and they want to do the same thing in Colombia and some of these other countries. And it's an area where a little bit of AXS goes a long way. And it's like their stream had higher production quality than some of the events that I gave like 150 or 200 AXS to. So um, I think it was just important to, oh, to yeah. unify the baseline and make sure we're spending money on folks that are really putting in the effort to you know, make it the best show possible uh, within their means. And if those folks in Venezuela can do it, then you know, right. I, I kind of think, think anybody can do it to some degree. Same with the rule set. You know, some tournaments were great and put together a very clear rule set and enforced it very, very evenly. And other events just kind of YOLO'd it and kind of made up the rule set as they went along, which is totally not the way we want to do it. So adding some of those basic parameters was just a reaction to some of uh, the data we collected from that first grant and seeing the, the wide spectrum of how people went about executing the different tournaments. Awesome. Yeah, it's it's so nice to have something that you can learn from. So I'm really excited. To, I was very excited to see this list of uh, recommendations and requirements. It was, uh, it, it's really, really good. I, I'm looking forward to it. I also like, you know, having some um, baseline rules for, you know, matchups and, and how the tournaments are going to progress. I, I think it, it can, without some of those baseline rules, it can, it can kind of fill. I, and I'm sure you could make exceptions depending on um, what the goal is, but uh, I do like having a, a baseline, and uh, this is great. You know, this is really, really great information. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing. As we go through the proposals, if we realize, hey, this requirement was too much, or this is, you know, we're totally open to feedback, and things can change. Very few things are locked in stone. And, and like I said, our goal is just the best events possible. So if we need to make some changes to achieve that goal, we're totally going to do it. You know, I love all the different scenes. I love the StarCraft scene. I love the Melee scene. I, I Every time I even talk about Melee, I get worried that Nintendo's going to try to shut thing I don't I just don't understand Nintendo but anyway you know I love I love seeing all that I, I know that uh, um, it's really really attractive to young people too and I when I say young people you know teenagers and stuff I, I think the more we can <laughs> we can uh, get uh, younger people involved the longer this space is going to be in place I mean and this is melee is a, a millennial game really and, you know, we, we see lots of um, Zoomers, younger people playing a game like that and getting really excited about those events. So like the offline LAN events, you know, I read through all of that. Seeing more live types of things to me, um, if possible, it would be great to see people actually gathering together, see them playing. Um, I, I would absolutely love to see them with their with their <laughs> devices, whatever, um, computers or whatever, um, head to head right next to each other actually, you know, battling it out, I mean, across the way so they can't see each other's screens or whatever. But it, to me, that just like a uh, uh, battleship uh, type of setup would be <laughs> incredible. I mean, I, I think so. I think it'd be really, really fun. So Shade yeah. is uh, challenging Indus in, in chat. So <laughs> I, I want to see that. I want to see how that goes. I have a feeling I know how that's going to go. <laughs> but maybe, yeah. maybe I'm wrong. Maybe uh, Shade's a... Uh, a hidden gem. It, it's an exciting time for Axie Esports. The, the first grant was rough, again, just because of the state the servers were in for a lot of that grant. And I think we weathered the storm, and now it's exciting to be able to up the ante a little bit. I mean, at like, what, $75, 7,500 AXS is 550K, Oof. something like that. Incredible. So, it, I mean, it, it's a plus. pretty substantial amount of esports support for the current state that we're at. And I think that. And definitely Wonderful. take that as an indicator of how serious we are about the competitive scene and trying to lay some of the the, the foundation here, you know, to, to build on top of. 
Yeah, I'm I'm really excited. I, I see a future in which you know it it is that sort of um, dedicated fan base, and I'm just really really looking forward to that time. And it's going to be fun to build it. And that's that's one thing um, I've heard in this community many times from G House. You know, specifically, um, you know, sometimes anticipating something coming. I know that it's it's uh, frustrating at times when it feels like it keeps things get pushed back and pushed back. But uh, the growth period, the anticipation period, that stuff is very important as well and and it's an exciting time to to be building this esports and and frankly um Ziori, i'm really really glad that uh, you're you're a big factor behind it because you have lots of experience and you've seen lots of great stuff in in the dota scene so thank you and maybe one last note on that that like i know esports isn't for everyone in terms of playing and that the high stress of the ultra competition really does appeal to like a minority of people in the axi community but i think the stories that we can capture in esports and being a fan of watching you know people that represent you or your team or your culture or whatever fandom it is that you identify with like that's the real magic and i think that's the part that we really need to start working on is connecting more of this casual Axie audience with becoming an esports fan. You don't have to be a player to be part of esports, right? And the, the fans are really a big aspect of it. And I think that's part of events telling these stories and capturing some of the, like, you know, we know some of the Indes stories and some of these other people that have, you know, come up and won tournaments recently, but there's a lot of others and there will be many more in the future. So uh, just very excited about that aspect and seeing so many people that don't even know that they're esports fans yet becoming esports fans in the future. Yep, yep. Cool, cool. All right. Well, let's see. So let's let's <laughs> let's head into this uh, can of worms. Uh, there was a new balance patch that was um, <laughs> issued, and the great thing about the balance patch, and I love this idea is, of it, a balance. Is that it was before the season started? Is that balancing <laughs> buffer period? Yes, exactly. I, I really, really like this concept. It's something that. Um, the framework is great. Like, this yeah, is much yeah. better than how it was before. That, yeah, um, this is like a, an actual utilization of the off season instead of the off season just being this kind of like dead period almost. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. Um, y you know, people are going to like the changes or not like the changes. That's just kind of part of the thing. And I've always kind of said it's it's tough. It's a tough situation to be in if you're not part of a major guild or you happen to be a big breeder of axes you're you're limited to what's available to you and that might be a particular team and if there's a balance patch that comes out and really hammers your particular team that you had success with it's it's a really hard pill to swallow um but again this this one i liked in a way better than other balancing updates patches because it did seek information from the community and input uh, from the community at large and that was one of the things i wanted to be sure that i highlighted was you know if you have a complaint about this and you didn't submit um, your thoughts about the balancing patch well you only have yourself to blame um, for not giving input and not being involved yeah. so you know, 100%. loved it, loved that there were great, well thought out, it sounds like, you know, data based comments, as well as, you know, comments that were more, that weren't maybe quite so data based, but were important. Um, one thing I really loved about this whole thing, I don't have every single one of them listed here. I, I know most of them, so we can talk about any of them, but the change to silent, silence whisper, I think was a very, very good change, something that probably needed to be made for a very, very long time. And um, if you're using something like Rosebud, then now all of a sudden Silence Whisper becomes something that's, depending on the mouth card that you're reliant on, um, becomes something that's actually quite poten potentially useful. Like people who are running ZigZag, yep. for example, might find Silence Whisper to be a legitimate um, card to, to run at this point. So it's going to be very interesting to see how all this all this goes. I did highlight a couple of axes here on this slide that people are um, kind of concerned about the double anemone an and the and the little owl. Um, have you thought through these things, Z or Enjoy too? I, I I know you've been playing a little bit more and paying attention to battles a little bit more as well, Enjoy. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm definitely uh, spending a lot more time than I used to um, gearing up for season twenty. Uh, I I still need to kind of solidify what team I'm going to jump into in this this uh, 
patch kind of threw me for a loop a little bit, like a lot of people. Um, no, no initial thoughts right now. Um, I think I still need a little bit of more play time in there. Um, I don't know, Ziori, any, any, I know you've been talking to people about this, um, and I'm sure they've brought their concerns to you or their, their initial yeah. thoughts. Do you have any, anything off the rip? It's yes and no. Weirdly, because I'm the esports guy, it is relevant to me that the game is balanced, but I'm really not a game designer and I don't have much actual experience in game design. I, I'm really more on like the esports kind of broadcasting system side historically. So um, I do have some input, but I admittedly have trouble seeing all of the layers and the ripple effects. I think one of the biggest things we need to be careful of is making sure we don't over nurse stuff um, yeah. and because it's like the okay, these four cards are all the top four cards and maybe they're, they're all really good, so it feels like we have to nerf all four of them, but if they're used in combination with each other, maybe just nerfing two of them is enough to break the combo, but then it's still viable. And if you nerf all four of them, then it just completely falls off the cliff and isn't really useful anymore. So I think that's the hardest part is seeing some of the ripple effects and some of that stuff really only becomes apparent uh, with testing, I think one of the most common pieces of feedback I've heard has to do with Scarab and Bidens, um, like that healing is very strong and Scarab lasting two turns and not being like a proper debuff that could be taken off was really one of the only effective tools there, but it also makes Scarab kind of broken and feels weird because it's not a debuff, even though it kind of feels like it should be a debuff. So making it a debuff then makes Bidens, who's a zero energy card, just really, really, really good and makes Immortal yeah. Plants maybe a little scary. Yeah. So I, I don't know what's perfect there, right? Like, how do we make Scarab good but not too good? Um, I, 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 I don't know. I don't have a degree in game design. Sorry, fellas. I, I, uh, no, no, so it's all I, good. I try to parse the info, and as a gamer, I, I can definitely feel that kind of stuff when you're playing on the ladder and you go, man, Scarab's like really good. I'm glad I had it. It just won me that game. Um, so I can yep. feel it in the moment, but I have trouble just looking at the sheet and going, oh, yeah, like the same way that some of you know the, the pro players can. Shade, um, shush, man. Talking about, uh, I mean, now that Scarab is an official debuff, yeah, I mean. And you go, man, Scarab's like really good. I'm glad I had it. It just won me that game. Um, so I can yep. feel it in the moment, but I have trouble just looking at the sheet and going, oh, yeah, like the same way that some of, you know, the, the pro players can. Shade, um, shush, man. Talking about, uh, I mean, now that Scarab is an official debuff, yeah, I mean, ooh, that that and Thorny could, could absolutely be something that we see. I mean, there's lots of new things. Um, I, I don't know. I'm really excited to, to see Silence Whisper become um, useful especially where we saw basically pure plants in the marketplace um, for uh, yeah. like pages and pages of the lowest priced pure plants <laughs> were <laughs> plants that had silence whisper. So um, I, I really, I think that we're yeah. going to see some, some um, different axes, but again, the, the real hardship that I see, and I'm hoping that origin changes this moving forward, but again, there's there's some materials that support this, but it's not like I have any specific information about this. Um, it feels like maybe Origin will allow people to have kind of one Axie team that they can grow up with and, and customize a little bit and be able to use maybe some of these power-ups and different things in order to remain relevant with kind of a, a single team of Axies. Whereas right now, it, I'm very sympathetic to somebody who... Um, had yeah. <laughs> had axes who four of their parts got nerfed as part of this um, balance chain and totally. change. And I, that, and that's hard. I think there's a desire to turn Axie into a little bit more of what feels like I would call a deck building experience where you just have oh, more ways idea. to customize mm -hmm. and it's less about being locked in. You know, even breeding right now maybe feels a little imperfect of you're going for like with aquas, there was a point where I was trying to breed like a cuckoo combo. It's like, okay, yeah. this is a little bit of a long shot. And you know, if you hit like the expected values there, so you're kind of just, you know, rolling the dice, trying to hit it. Um, and the ones that you don't hit, you're like, well, that's a useless Axie, and I don't really have a burn mechanism or a sink for it, so it's just going to sit there and eventually become energy for a scholar one day. Um, that, that feels not quite right. You know, it'd be really cool if you could somehow craft the Axies that are really close or were just one breed off and make them 
you know, that perfect combination that you're looking for. Um, that definitely feels in line with a, a competitive game and the, the direction we want to move things. But, you know, exactly how and when, I, I certainly can't say to any degree of certainty. Yeah, but yeah. on a high level, totally. And I, I guess moments like these, I also feel somewhat obligated to reiterate that my, my kind of age old, like, this is what I mean when I say it's a game first. Um, instead of being an investment first. Correct. Obviously, the investment is a huge part. I don't want to downplay that. The economy is a big part of the game. They're intertwined. It's a really close second. But when push comes to shove, like it's about making a great game. And sometimes we have to make unpopular decisions for the sake of game balance to make the game better because having a balanced game is really the fundamental driver of value in the ecosystem. And you know, <laughs> there's a lot a of extraction. Point. From the ecosystem. Man, I don't so know how many times I've said that. I'm really glad to hear you saying it too. Yeah, it's, this is a, it's game. a game first. Yes, yeah. 100%. This is all a game. And yeah, there's a huge economy behind it. And that is because of a great choice, an amazing choice that uh, Sky Mavis made to allow these assets to be player owned and, and for most of the assets to be player created as well. Um, it's, it's actually an incredible, incredible system, but we do tend to forget about that game first mentality. We hear lots of people complaining about, um, value of their investment. Well, you got to remember this is a game and games, they change. Um, we have releases, things get updated and, and changed. And, um, <laughs> the, the famous, uh, creator of Ethereum basically did it because of frustration with, uh, his character in World of Warcraft getting nerfed in, in a way. So yeah, it, it can have long reaching effects. Um, but again, it does have to be a fun, fair game. And if, if a particular set of moves and axes make it so that it's perceived at least as being unfair, then it has to be addressed. So, all right. Um, absolutely love this idea that, uh, if, if something comes up, if there's a mechanic issue that comes up, that that's going to be a communication process, um, and and that hopefully we'll be able to just lock in exactly what these axes are and the and the cards that will stay the case, so we don't have the bone cell bumpy issue that we had this last season. So, yeah, there will be situations like that in the future where you know it's. You're never going to please everyone, but at least if we look at, you know, how does the majority of the community feel and start moving towards, again, it's all about building with governance and DAO in mind. Even if we're still a year or two off from that, we want to start building with that framework in as much as we can. So um, that's exactly where that energy is coming from. All right. We're back to this. Anything you can give us about uh, Ron timing? I mean... I, I don't yeah. I don't know if we can, but I these are moments where I'm envious of Jiho because he's allowed <laughs> to just shoot from the hip and I have to be a little so more. So Jiho, careful. you're here in the uh, chat. You're welcome to to give us some information if you're still around. It's been a while. Or uh, just give that's... just give the green light to, to Z here. <laughs> it's uh yeah. It's been a while. It's a really exciting time. Oh, I, awesome. I feel like uh, we, we really are at these these huge nexus points in the Axie future. We're going to look back and uh, kind of laugh at that. Uh, I don't know what a, what we were feeling like right now. And it's really cool to be farming a token and have no idea what it's worth. It's it's really exciting. It feels like a, a mystery novel or something. But I'm I'm in it. You know, I'm in the thick of the plot. Jiho says I'm excited for Ron. That is all I'll say. You know, it, it's it's okay. We have Enjoy, so Enjoy. Yeah, use I mean, your you Oracle can, you powers. Can tell, you can tell us that the white paper is dropping tomorrow, and and you know, Ron's coming in two weeks. That's that's fine. Fine. I mean, either way, we're expecting it soon. Sounds, um, sounds like a fun near, simulation. <laughs> we're, we're we're nearing the end of the uh, the farming period. I mean, it's it's coming. We got a lot of stuff. Alrighty, alrighty. Well, it's always fun to play this little this little game. It's it's part of the podcast thing. No, no pressure. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> okay, oh, yeah. so community stuff, amazing stuff. I wanted to highlight some of it. We've we've had so much team news, and we are already past an hour into our podcast that we try to keep it about an hour, um, but we still have some more things that we've got to cover. Um, just amazing stuff from the community. I couldn't ignore it this time. Um, saw this. 
Um, and I, I'm not, I'm not uh, going to pronounce it very well, but I'll give it a shot. El futuro es ahora, which I think means the future is now. Um, so we see this, this shop. It looks like it's a, maybe an electronic shop or a gaming shop. And um, they're saying specifically that they will take uh, payment in Axie Infinity products. That was awesome. I'm excited to see this. I hope that that's legitimate. I, 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 it looked like it was completely legitimate. Um, that would be pretty cool to walk into a shop and say, all right, yeah, I think I, I want this laptop. And, and here's, uh, um, here's a, a couple of uh, pure, pure axes that you can add to your breeding pool. Pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah, um, Ronin, SLP, Axis, and um, really, really awesome stuff there. Um, great information from Zio. I saw here. I, I think yeah, Zio's I, been on. He's been a fire on Twitter. Just yes. good information every day. Absolutely. And I, I love. I want to you know challenge uh, content creators again. Um, sometimes people don't fully understand. I mean, we've been doing this, some of us have been doing Axie, um, for a very long time. And so we understand wallets and chains and, um, all of these things quite well. And, um, it, sometimes people who are, who are just joining up, they need some help with just the basic information. And so I really like Zio's, um, information here about how to farm Ron. I think it's going to be pretty critical that people have Ron, I'm really interested to see when a Ron, um, I don't know what the other part of the pair will be, but some trading pair with Ron, I assume Ethereum, um, going to be very, very interesting to see when that comes so that people can just directly acquire Ron. And then we'll have a really fun, you know, price I'm discovery stoked. period, which will be interesting as well. Are you just going to hold all of your Rons, Baronar? Are you going to try to play the flip game? If it comes out hot, are you going to sell it and then try to buy back in low? Or are you just, you're just in it to win it? I mean, I, I, I can't remember. If, if, you're, if you're an AxiChat exclusive member, you know a lot about my investment kind of approaches and strategies. Um, highly unlikely to do that. Highly likely yeah, to let right. go of a. So you're not going to be day trading your Rons. Okay. Hi, highly yeah. likely to let go of a very <laughs> small percentage, but I am a big believer in Ron, so it's going to be a very small percentage. Yeah. Um, so we'll we'll see um, how that goes forward. I smart what man. I, what I'm hearing about Ron gets me really excited um, for Axie, but also for the potential for other Sky Mavis releases, maybe even other potential um, third party applications on the Ronin chain as well. And so um, really, really hard for me to have any desire <laughs> to let go of, of very much of, of, of the Ron token, especially when it could develop into um, just a really strong, almost primary chain uh, that can be bridged back and forth to main chain Ethereum. So yeah, I'm very excited for Ron. And if you're wondering about Ron, this uh, post from Zio is a great place to start. Um, to try to mm. figure out how to how to farm some, and then um, this piece of art that's on this slide for those that are listening is by Kenneth Lawrence Martin. Um, just incredible! If you haven't had a chance, get on and follow uh, Ronan. This was retweeted by Ronan. You can get on and follow Astroman, which is Kenneth, and you've got to check out that piece of work. It's it's absolutely incredible. It's like this crowded marketplace of axes with just this you know great like S small love potion tanks and vendors and you know a, a person in the middle of it with their phone engaging with uh with the axie space so yeah uh, just just a, just a ton of detail i uh i don't know about you but i still haven't found waldo uh, is waldo in there i'm I gonna have no, to. I, I don't i don't <laughs> think so but yeah i mean uh, amazing there's there's been a, a contest going on for the last week or so and um, a lot of the entries have been awesome. It's it's cool to Incredible. see. Incredible, yeah. So much talent. Yeah, this was one that I felt like I just absolutely had to to pull out. And again, thank you to all of the community content creators. It's just amazing. Thank you to the team too. I mean, uh, we love this space. We love what's happening. I'm excited for the future of this space. But man, the content creators from the community are just they they just blow my mind over and over again with uh, what they produce and and the tools and information that they're gathering for all of us. So 
Really, really cool. Um, so that's random this week. Had some incredibly random stuff happen. Um, Joe yeah, Rogan. Your, your twin. <laughs> as I've heard him call. I mean, I, the, being the, compared, the, yeah. The, yeah. the baroner of, uh, of, of health and fitness, I've, I've heard him called. I like that very much. <laughs> Thank you, Enjoy. Wow, okay, well, I'm going to stop talking now. I'm, I'm very, very <laughs> impressed. I mean, not, I don't, Joe is an interesting guy. Wouldn't it be amazing if, uh, if we got an opportunity to swap uh, experiences? Oh, I mean, that, that, is, that is the number one podcast in the world for the last two or three years. Like, uh, being featured on there or, or just discussed for a little bit, you know, brings oh. so many eyes to this. I mean, not even to Axie, but to the space in general, it brings more people to NFTs, it, you know, which, which all I think eventually lead to Axie. So, um, you know, the, it, it's just exciting. Um, and, you know, some of this other stuff that you brought up here, it, it, the whole space, I've been saying it for a couple of weeks, just seems like it's, it's on the verge of exploding. Um, it, it kind of is. I mean, this, uh, this we found out today. This uh, Microsoft. Microsoft acquiring Activision um, is is just a huge thing. Um, literally, the the reason that they said that they're doing it is to um, to compete on the on the path for the metaverse. Um, so they're they're literally trying to battle Facebook on this on this uh, vision for what the metaverse is, um, mm -hmm. which is is pretty crazy to me, right? Like how much how much attention and energy and and like corporate dollars are flooding in right now to kind of meet us on something that we've been doing for years. It's Isn't that the greatest exciting. part that these giant brands are now going to invest billions of dollars to fight over building the metaverse. Meanwhile, those of us building the actual metaverse over here <laughs> are uh, just going to keep building on our own terms. And it's going to be really Hell interesting yeah. to see how it shakes out. And I totally agree with you. I love it. It's great mainstream energy into the space, but, um, yeah, I think it's one thing to say, hey, we're going to be the metaverse. It's another thing to build the metaverse. So let, let's see what they can do. I, I'll remain cautiously optimistic until, uh, you know, we see what they make. Yeah, I mean, one thing that, uh, I mean, I don't know, this might not be a take that everybody is excited about, but uh, Blizzard has been in such a state for the past few months, um, maybe even a little longer than the past few months that it's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Microsoft um, at the helm of, of the Blizzard intellectual property. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think I've even said before, I, I, still, I still get on and play every now and then with the, the classic, well, the, uh, we're in the Burning Crusade now. Um, I, I, I've, I've always loved World of Warcraft, so it's easy to do that. So it'll be interesting. A lot of people... Um, are protective of their their kind of babies when it comes to gaming and so forth, and and a lot of mm -hmm. people aren't very excited about Microsoft. So I don't know. It's it's an interesting situation though with with Blizzard in such turmoil. Um, maybe this is actually going to I don't know. I have no idea. It's it's really hard to know good bad um, what's going to happen. Um, I know seventy billions a big number, Baronar. It is billion with a. Baron RB. Yeah, um it, it's a it's a big yeah. one. And uh I, I yeah, it it's going to be interesting to see what that type of cash infusion um does with the space and if it truly is World of Warcraft um in a metaverse experience, oof, that's going to be an interesting thing. But how long out do you think that is Z or Enjoy? Um if if that's their plan, um how how long before we were able to um years years i mean they could right. rush it i the 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 big thing that i keep thinking about right is the metaverse that we're building it's it's all interoperable right the the goal kind of is to be able to trade things on open marketplaces to between potentially move your assets chains. and use it in different yep. places between chains um you know we've got so many different people building the the structure the infrastructure um of of everything to make sure that you know we can handle the um the throughput um and the the way i've seen like these large companies and their walled gardens in the past they they don't like playing nicely together um so i, I kind of see like a, a mm -hmm. facebook kind of building their thing and a um a microsoft building their thing and 
you know, I'm I'm not sure that they're going to be interoperable the the way that we're doing it here. Um, And And that defeats the purpose entirely. It it defeats the purpose. And and then so what do you get? Do you have um, kind of these fake off ramps that people build kind of like uh, what they used to do for World of Warcraft to to sell the gold? Right. Is is there stuff like that that's kind of built in the back end? Um, and then you're kind of building just this half-assed blockchain, anyways, to to manage the back end. Um, I, I don't know. It's it's going to be interesting to see. But these game studios are historically very very slow to build, um, and so for them to tie everything together and, and make it one experience, and mm-hmm. um, I, I don't I don't know. I'm not. And blockchain I'm not moves fast. We move at like turbo speed. Yeah, I. I, I think we'll probably see some, you know, like NFT collections and like what chains they use and how they go about it. All of that is going to be really interesting and could potentially have big implications. I think it's a small target, but that's the crazy part. If done right, this could really resonate, right? Think about some of the Blizzard IPs that we all really care about. Yeah. Like, I to me, it's Diablo too. I think about some of those, yeah. like, what if there were a hundred grandfather too. swords and like there was some really cool, let's even call it a Blizzard only metaverse, but like you could buy like NFT versions of all of these classic items and then create these characters and have them interact in some way. Like, that could be cool, right? There, there is some emotion and nostalgia attached to some of this stuff. Like, um, Big games are are on the line here, so I, I don't want to be too cynical, but I guess I, I really do think it's a small target, and I, I agree with pretty much everything Enjoy said. So um, I, I'm ready to be pleasantly surprised, and if they want to join our metaverse, aka the metaverse, the one that is interoperable and like there is only one metaverse, right? Like if you believe they, in the metaverse, then you believe in the vision that there's only one, yeah, and it all works together, and that's what we're trying to make, and that's why it's the metaverse. If you're trying to build your own metaverse, then you're already distorting the definition of what the term is supposed to encapsulate, in my humble opinion. Yeah, and being kind of the fiscal libertarian that I am, they are going to have to make huge strides in ownership of assets being allowed to uh, play. They're going to have to give up a lot of ownership that they've been very, right. very much addicted to for a long time. And Correct. that's right. not impossible, but... Hard, hard to do. Giving Fair. up power is a lot harder than getting it sometimes. Oh yeah, I, I completely I'm, agree. I'm I'm also very skeptical um, if if they do anything with tokenomics or you know any any economic building. You know, it's it's possible that they avoid it altogether. Although, like you kind of just mentioned, like they're addicted to money. They want to see money flowing through the system. That's why a lot of um, mainstream games have kind of seen what Axie's doing and and started dipping their toes in or exploring the space um, just because of how much money is flowing through the marketplace. Um, but historically, traditional games have terrible economies. They're not built for multiple people trading back and forth necessarily. Look at look at uh, Diablo 3. Um, you know, it, it, I, I, I yeah. kind of feel like, yes, Axie's had some, his, some issues in the last, you know, six months or so with SLP price and all that. Um, but we've also, because of that, kind of experienced some of these problems ahead of time and, and had the time to learn from mistakes, um, which they haven't really had to do in a, in a real world thing. So I think we've got some, um, you know, a, a nice little lead on them there as well. It, it'll be something to watch for sure. Yeah, and I, I think a big part of um, the issue with SLP has is we've already said this before, so this isn't new. Has to do with the exponential growth that took place. Um, I think that it's it's a lot easier to handle um, a single token economy. Well, I guess multiple token NFT and ERC twenty tokens. So SLP and axes. It's a lot easier to handle that at a smaller scale. As the scale grows, then the implications of um, relatively minor things have huge ripples um, that you may or may not be able to anticipate or control. Um, and so, you know, I, I think that it's, it's not, I don't know, it, it's very, very hard for someone to anticipate everything that might come up when you see the sort of um, growth that Axie Infinity saw in such a relatively short period of time. Um, plus a new model that nobody's really dealt with, this owner-user model um, that really hasn't existed and, and you end up with a lot of sell pressure. Um, and then, you know, you hope you have growth that it maintains the buy pressure for the axes, but things happen and, and, um, 
yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm really, really positive about it. I think it would be wrong for me to um, act like there isn't an issue economically with the SLP token. So I'm not doing that. Um, I think that there are things um, that are a little bit, and, and frankly, my biggest concern, because I'm a, I'm a pretty big market price enthusiast, is um, the biggest issue is that floor axes are worth less than what it would take to breed them on a single breed. To me, that's really the, the main flag that, that's an issue. Um, if they if they continue to be worth more than a minimum breed, then we wouldn't really necessarily have an issue. Then there'd just be more price discovery about what an Axie's worth and what SLP is worth. But in the current situation, it's it's difficult. But I feel like the team's clearly aware of, of it and have talked about it recently in a lot of the materials that they've released. Um, and I feel like things are coming soon. Um, I... Uh, of the things I don't know for sure what's going to happen this week, um, who knows what, what could happen, I guess. Um, um, it's, it's so fun to have somebody like Ziori on the stream that <laughs> can either smile or, and wave or, or give us more information. Or uh, Yeah, these are, these are the tricky points. Um, yeah. And yeah, I, I, honestly, I, I, I don't want to give you too much. I, that's... Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, I there's a that that's the thing. It's like even when I started, you know, it was e more of us were wearing more hats and now that we have a, a team of 100 people, there's a lot of people working on stuff in in Axie that you know, I, I get sort of some updates like by by virtue of being in shared community or a, a company comms, but overall, you know, I'm working full-time in my esports vertical, they're working full-time in their uh, tokenomics vertical and you know, we don't have a, a huge reason to exchange notes across the board a lot. So a lot of this stuff, it, it's just hard for me personally to comment on um, because, yeah, I, I'm yeah. I'm sort of in it with you guys as well. Um, I think it's clear that we we need some some adjustments to SLP at some some junction. Um, there's been a lot of really good feedback on Twitter and some long threads about like different levers that we can pull, different options for syncs. Um, and you know ways that we can generate demand while we're in this holding pattern until Origin comes out. I think at this point most people agree that Origin's really exciting yeah. and will will trigger a huge stimulus. And I think a lot of people have assessed that based on comments from myself and others that Origin is close. So maybe I should be a little patient in my breeding operations if I'm going to want to breed for Origin and things are about to change. So what do we do in the short term? You know that's that's really the main question of how do we fill this gap and. Uh, yeah, that, that question needs to be answered. I totally well, agree. Well put. And if if I can um, kind of reemphasize, the different team members have different roles, responsibilities, and knowledge, just as Z just said. And so, you know, they should be a little bit free to communicate as humans. I really love your tweets and stuff, Ziori. So I, 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 I always I feel bad when people like jump on you and, and you know, get kind of negative and pissy about things because you're just trying your best as a human being too to give information that you have and express your interests and and desires about the game too um you you it's might, a tight rope it you is know, i have to yeah. not over promise and not over communicate but we still want to leak a little bit and try to communicate what we're working on if i say hey i'm working on the esports grant it's what how many more soons are there going to be when's the grant coming and if i don't say anything it's like what have you been doing for the last three weeks it's like well okay i i don't i don't know what the best communication path is so you know, when in doubt, I just try to, to trust my better judgment. Often it does feel like less is more, but trying to be as, as you know, open about the process as possible. We're, we're learning. Like I said, 1% every day. That's our goal. And I, I think at least recently we've been almost exceeding that. Um, I'm pretty proud of how active the sub stack has been over the last like two months, especially. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and I, I really love this process. Um, even even the, the Twitter account for... Um, Axie, or I think it was just Axie Infinity talking about the balance changes. Maybe, maybe it was even um, Jiho talking about, "Hey, I, I do, I sympathize with some concerns that we see with this this balance update." It had just a completely different feel than maybe in the past. I thought it was um, really positive, community positive, and I really liked it. Um, 
So there was a leak. We talked about it last week, Ziori, about these things that are in the chain that appear to be Lunar New Year um, items. Absolute no-no topic or something you can talk about? Huh, I wish I had gotten notes on this uh, beforehand. Not from you guys, just internally about what the official... I actually did see a tweet about it, and then I got so focused on uh, like esports-related stuff that I didn't really think about it. Um, I just kind of clicked past and went, oh, wow, would you look at that? Uh, uh, Shade says, so, let me check the script. I am excited for Lunar New Year. <laughs> Yes, uh, the Lunar New Year is going to be a very exciting time for people all around the world. That's uh... <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, good oh man, the block, the blockchain is the blockchain. I wonder. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, we we still. Yeah, if you're okay with hanging out with us, we still have just a couple more slides. Um, I, we kind of covered this, so I don't know if there's more we need to talk about, um, but the between two shrubs this week is traditional tech is invading our metaverse. Does decentralization win? I guess we didn't fully cover that. Um, I've had a chance to really kind of ponder this. Obviously, Enjoy came up with this. Uh, do you want a minute or do you want to jump in, Z? Do you have in insight on this? We kind of did talk about it, but. Yeah, I don't know if insight is the right word. I think we're all far, fairly aligned that like naming your company Metaverse doesn't really mean that you own the Metaverse. And to the people that have been, you know, whatever you want to call true <laughs> believers, you know, I certainly haven't been a true believer in the last 10 years of learning about and evaluating blockchain, but I've always been intrigued by it and sort of been looking for the best aspects of it that I think could actually change the world. So um, when you when you engage with those people, you realize how laughable it is to just sort of come in and say, yes, the metaverse, we've figured it out. Um, so I think they're trying to invade, but I think this might be, I hope this is kind of the beginning of a paradigm shift and kind of a revolution of you know, showing the power of what decentralized stuff can do. But some of the early DAOs are a little scary, you know, like some of these groups, uh, it's it's hard to self-govern. And how do we insulate from like psyops? You know, there are weird things that have happened where you start to wonder like, you know, think that game EVE Online, that has happened where yeah. people have gone deep for years and they yeah. pretend to be part of an alliance so that they can backstab because they're really part of another alliance. Like, you know that that's happening in these DAOs, right? If anybody can come in and you can talk the talk, like didn't somebody just get caught? Like I think I got a report today from my assistant that somebody got uh, caught like kind of scamming and they got doxxed and then they found out that they've been running like 16 Twitter accounts that they've yeah, been Beanie, pretending are all Beanie, different people. Maxie. Yeah, and, yeah. and the, the funny thing about that too is so now he got caught out and, and you know, whatever. Um, and I guess he's part of some boards and they pushed it off to another person who was... Uh, you know, who was also involved. And it also turned out to be one of his accounts. So, um, yeah, man, and what, what you're saying really rings true. Like, it's it's definitely happening. And, and that, this is one of the things about, like, only being able to look at avatars on Twitter, right, and, and paying attention to um, specific yeah. narratives. Because you don't know how many of these accounts are run by one or two people. Um, yep. So, you know, it, it, it's definitely going to be interesting. Like, how many, how many people saying that, you know, Bitcoin isn't going to make it right now. Um, are, are, are actually push, push, just push. trying to push the price down. Yeah, I, I mean it's it's a thin market. I think this stuff happens all the time. People need to you know figure out what they believe in and and stick to their guns because uh, you know the, it, it's where we're just being manipulated all the time. So, so I hope decentralization wins. I think that's like the scary thing about like true decentralization gets a little scary in terms of this, yeah, without KYC or like stuff that isn't civil resistant. So um, I, it has a lot of benefits, but in a lot of times its strengths are also a weakness in terms of these weird attack vectors, like these social attack vectors. So um, I remain bullish. I would, if I have to pick teams, I'm, I'm on team decentralization over team traditional tech, but um, yeah, I'm not 100% convinced centralization will will just win out by default. Yeah, and and my answer is I think that there are issues that have to be resolved with respect to decentralization because just like I guess most democratic or democratic republic governments, um, there's a form of decentralization in a one vote per one person kind of system, um, but that doesn't mean you can actually manage and govern things. Um, just on that kind of mob rule type of a situation. In fact, 
um, people that are in a, the minority, minority positions who really are entitled or should receive some sort of rights get just land blasted if it's just a mob rule or majority rule type of situation. And so I think decentralization, um, so long as there are really good thought leaders behind it and making sure that things are happening in, in a way that uh, creates uh, protections and fairness and um, equity um, types of situations, I think decentralization wins. Traditional t tech, it's always going to feel like that authoritarian government. And unless you have the quote unquote benevolent dictator behind it, um, it's always going to feel um, it's going to feel forced and controlled and coerced. And so, yeah, my hope is decentralization. Um, I really love some of the things I'm seeing, even in just the Axie main discord, um, talking more about um, community input, community involvement in some of the more challenging things that are happening in the space. So. Yeah, I, I guess I, my final thought would be that decentralization doesn't mean 100% decentralization. Yeah. A little bit of centralization goes a long way. And sometimes it's good to be able to have like a trusted force that is, you know, centralized, but, you know, kind of proven good actors. You know, it's like a, a right. watered down version Voted of the benevolent, benevolent leader. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's a more decentralized version. Maybe that's the way I like to say it. It exists on a spectrum, but we're splitting hairs. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, that's, I think exactly the, the same thing I kind of proposed. And Joy, was there more you wanted to add or? No, I, I, I think we did talk about it a little bit already. Um, I agree with everything being said. I mean, I, I'm, I'm here cause I like decentralization. I like what this, uh, this free economy does. And I think most people do, right? Most people don't like being protected too much. They, they like freedom. They like being, you know, kind of defining their own lines. Um, and I, I think that's what we've historically seen, um, you know, with some of these other other platforms that have come out. Um, and, you know, decentralization, this this really is Wild West. And, you know, I, that feels good up until you get shot. Right. So that's kind of what Diori was saying about, you know, having some having a little bit of guide rails, but, you know, maybe a little bit more freedom as well than than that walled garden. Right on. Really? All right. Well, on that note, I mean, Digital Nation has a pretty good context. Um, we are building it, and uh, we've got to all be involved in building it. Um, if you want something to be great, well, then you better put in great efforts. And you better put in positive energy and positive inputs, or what you get out is what you put in, in my view. So let's make a great Digital Nation as we're, as we're building it. Really, really looking forward to things as they continue to evolve in this space, um, especially this week, apparently, you know. So uh, just a quick pitch for Axie Chat. We do this uh, public stream for everyone, and we have a premium experience. And if you're interested in that, please look for our NFTs, um, and they can get you an access to our premium shows. That takes place right after, um, right after this show. Um, we do have the limited quality merch. Once these ones are gone, they will no longer be available. Um, <laughs> limited quantity, not quality. They're great quality, limited in quantity. quantity. Yes. Did I say quality? <laughs> yes, wow. you did. Sorry. I thought that one Dude, was worth that correct, is hilarious. Uh, correcting. Thank you. Yes. You never know. I just get on a roll. I just start saying things. Um, <laughs> yeah, Ron's going to be released tomorrow. I mean, actually in an hour or so. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just kidding. That's always how it goes. Yeah, yeah. Can I show my dreads real quick? Oh, please Can I be do. that guy? Yes. Yeah. Gang, I think I I think I still I'm I'm scared to make this claim, but I'm pretty sure I was the first person crazy enough to mint their hair on the blockchain. I got 36 of those bad boys. They're kind of like a Zayori founders token. They're on OpenSea right now. Just type Zayori into OpenSea and you'll see them. I got a little blue check mark next to my name. Uh, would love to see some new dread holders around. Uh, several of them are also uh, Axie chat uh, holders. So there's some crossover in our audiences. Um, there will be some future perks and stuff. And I think we have some fun ideas with the dreads. You know, I have limited bandwidth, but it's the foundation for something great. Uh, awesome. There's a whole blog about it on my website with all the details, Sayori.tv. But uh, yeah, I'm still proud of that. I took my dreadlocks. I had an artist make individual renders of each one. Then we minted the damn things. My dreads are here forever, whether you like it or not, Baronar. 
I love it. Now, I, <laughs> you asked me about that uh, really, really early on, and I, I was super excited about it. I think it's a great, a great, great idea, and uh, amazed that you held on to those and were able to do something cool like this with them. So. Yeah, I will. I just I should say thank you because you were one of the people I sent the original idea to, and you yeah. said I've seen crazier things make money. So, oh okay, yeah, man, why not go for it? Well, you missed all the shots you don't take, and I mean, I, that was a delicate stage where I needed that little bit of reinforcement. Good, so good. I, I do thank you. Oh, I, I love seeing people put themselves out there. It, it can be tough. It's vulnerable. There's lots of things that uh, you know you can say quality instead of quantity and various different things like that. <laughs> but it's uh, I always love seeing people. You know that great quote about. Uh, the players in the field of battle, the ones that are actually on the pitch, um, as opposed to people who are just criticizing and, and uh, I won't say that. I had a wood <laughs> joke come to my mind. We'll move on. Okay. All right. Well, I'm so so glad you joined us, Ziori. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody who tuned in and, and watched uh, Axie Chat and, and hung out with us. I thought the I thought there was just a great uh, chat going on too. So really, really appreciate everybody tuning in. Um, Zuri, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Always a pleasure. Glad to be here. And uh, yeah, keep up the good work, fellas. Uh, we wouldn't be the same community we are without Axie Chat. You guys are a wow. staple. So uh, keep up the oh, good work. That means, that means so much. That means so much. Thanks for stopping in, um, guys. We do have a few good guests uh, planned for the next couple of weeks as well. So. Stay tuned for that as well. Um, other than that, Bernard, what do we say? Hey, everybody, Axie Hard. Have a great Axie day Hard in Lunasia. So awesome. Take care, guys. Take care. Take care.